Hello friends, followers and fellow flight simmers. Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator and another video with the fantastic add-on by Just Flight, the British Aerospace Engineering 146 Professional. I think um, the Microsoft Flight Simulator is now getting high fidelity airliners that LAFO, a lot of us were waiting for and it is, I think, uh, realistic to say that it's blooming. Um, spring is sprung, so to speak in, speak, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And we have seen two releases this week. Uh, 146 from Just Flight is the first one to make it to the finish line, and then the MD82 from Leonardo is released. And we have some more exciting airway, uh, airliners and aircraft coming to the simulator during the course of this week. One of them being the Milwis Cessna 310, which will be released tomorrow. There is still no pricing information though. And the PMDG 737 is set to release uh, later this week, uh, probably over the weekend. And the other one everybody is aware of, I believe, is the Phoenix Simulations A320. So a lot of airliners and high fidelity aircraft is coming to Microsoft Flight Simulator. I have been enjoying 146 so far. This is one of those aircraft that puts a big smile on my face when I'm flying and I cannot tell you enough that how much fun I had with this little aircraft, this little jet, uh, doing short hops here and there in mostly European airports. So today we are going to carry out a full flight tutorial to take a look at the cold and dark startup procedure one more time programming our flight and taking a look at the climb phase how to use the autopilot mode cruise how to calculate the top of descent because this doesn't give you that information as far as i know we will check the progress page when we are up in the air and how to plan the descent arrival and approach into our destination airport we are wearing Aer Lingus colors today Beautiful livery I found under flightsim.to. Go check it out. They have a huge selection of liveries for the 146 now. In about three days or more, uh, a bunch of liveries popped up in flightsim.to. And this is one of those that I liked, the looks. And uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's the plan for today. So we will carry out an RNAV flight plan using the FMS, FMC on board. And next video we will do the same flight, same route, uh, this time using the conventional radio navigation to showcase the navigational capabilities of the 146. We are currently situated at Dublin International Airport. This is where we are going to start our journey and our destination airport is Manchester. So this is a short hop with around 35 minutes airtime, I believe and a perfect uh, length of flight to demonstrate the abilities of the 146 one more time. Without further ado, let's jump into the cockpit and let's get this thing started. Here we are in the cockpit of the 146. There is a Ryanair uh, aircraft just landed coming for the uh, terminal building or the gates. And we will start with uh, carrying out the startup checks and powering the aircraft. First things first, we'll power on our EFB. As I mentioned before, this EFB has some great options like pulling your flight plan from SimBrief so that you have your route information here. Your fuel requirements are here. I wish this also had the um, METAR information that would have made this so much easier. But so be it, we will, we will take a look at this. Uh, this also has the charts, which we will take a look. In fact, we can plug in our ICAO code for Dublin and search for the airport. And for now, we will just go and pull the airport chart uh, to brief for our taxi routing. That is the chart right there. I love how Navigraph integration can help you and this also increases the immersion so that you don't have to leave the cockpit to get certain things done. Anyway, enough talking there. We'll go to the lower overhead panel. And before we do the startup 
uh, or battery powering the battery um, or turning the batteries on to provide power to the aircraft there are certain things that you want you might want to check especially if you are using um, state saving because there are some certain switches that needs to be off so that you don't cause harm to the ground crew when you are powering the aircraft and whatnot so we will just carry a basic one out um, we'll check that our transponder is in standby in fact it is our throttles are in the uh, fuel cutoff position flaps are retracted and landing uh, flaps are retracted and the speed brakes are stalled our radar radar is off and all of our hydraulic pumps are currently in an off state We'll start with checking our battery voltage. We need to have more than 23 volts to successfully power the aircraft, so we have more than enough. We'll turn the battery power to on and various systems will start coming to life. Immediately, we will go to the upper overhead and turn our nav lights, which is here, to high intensity. And we will arm the cabin emergency lights and turn on the no smoking lights. For now, this is what we will do for the lights. While we are here, um, we can turn on the Yo Damper 1 and 2 master switches, AP master and avionic master switches. We can also turn the lift spoilers to turn on the lift spoilers and activate yellow and green systems. And we can turn on the anti skid at this point. We'll go down to the lower overhead, we'll get some lights going. It's a little bit dark due to weather and cloud coverage but this should get us enough lighting uh, as far as the lighting goes while we are here we'll tie the buses AC and DC buses and then we'll arm the standby inverter and generator we are not quite ready to provide power to the galley we don't want to do that on battery power we need either APU or ground power to be able to do that and today we are going to use our APU to power the aircraft systems. Let's get that started and then we will be programming our flight in the FMC. To turn on the APU you need to turn the left inner pump on. APU starts with suction power or sucks the fuel out of the tank but you have to add the pump on to reduce the wear and tear and make it run a little bit more efficiently. Right now we are reading low inner left inner low pressure. This will go away when the pump gets AC power from the APU upon start startup. Uh, we'll go to the upper overhead, carry out an APU fire test to make sure our fire detection systems are working, which they are, and we'll carry out an extinguisher test to make sure in case of a fire, the extinguishers are available to put out the fire. All checks out and we'll go ahead and hit the starter switch to start the APU, monitor the RPM starting to increase and if we go out we can in fact hear the APU at the back of the aircraft. This is the exhaust port of the APU which is a small turbine engine that provides bleed air and electrical power to the aircraft systems. As soon as APU is online you'll see an APU uh, power available and it's also displaying that APU fuel low pressure and APU power available when I turn the APU gen on this generator will provide AC power and these pumps should turn on and those both lights should extinguish that's the APU power generator on and as you see both lights exting extinguished because now the pumps are running then APU is getting enough fuel pressure to keep running steadily and efficiently all right, so that takes care of that and we will start programming our flight first and take a look at the uh, load sheet to load our passengers, cargo and whatnot. We'll start with, uh, we'll skip the position initialization. Uh, this aircraft doesn't have an IRS system, therefore that's not functional here. It's automatically done based on our last position. We'll start with entering our origin and destination airports. We are currently at Dublin, Echo India Delta Whiskey. And our destination is Echo Golf Charlie Charlie, Manchester. 
All right, let me pull the flight plan on a different screen because I don't want to go back and forth between the tablet to confuse people. Um, so therefore we will just use the other screen. I will just use the other screen for the video uh, efficiency or effectiveness purposes. Our flight number today is Echo India November 212. We'll plug that in here to flight number and we'll immediately go to the departure and arrivals page to select our departure. We are departing from runway 10 right and we will be departing using Leafy 2 Echo departure. Let's execute this and go back to the flight plan page. Now that information is filled, us, filled for us for the star SID and the transition from SID to the flight plan routing. We'll go to the next page. We have a single waypoint. As I said, this is a short hop and we will plug that in. We are taking an airway, Lima 9 or 75, and that airway will take us to Malud, Mike Alpha Lima Uniform Delta. From there, our arrival starts. We'll execute this, go to the departure and arrivals page, to the index, and select the arrival from here. We are expecting an ILS approach to runway 05 right and we are expecting Mercy 3 Bravo arrival. No transition at this point that creates a waypoint that's way uh, far away from our flight plan routing and creates an interesting route which we don't want so we will uh, leave the transition empty and execute this. From here we go to the legs page. We'll take a look at our routing to make sure there are no discontinuities. There is one right here. To clear that up, we will select the next point, next waypoint in the line, go back and paste it over the discontinuity to fix the discontinuity. Now the aircraft knows how to get to Val from Malud. You can also uh, go and check your rest of the routing. We have vectors in case of a missed approach to our holding point and there's a discontinuity there but that's acceptable. That is our flight plan routing done. While we are here we'll turn on our radios, uh, communication radios and we'll put the weather radar to standby. Next up after this step is to take a look at our uh, weights and balances. According to our flight plan as you might have seen on the other screen we will need 4.5 tons of fuel. Let's round it up to 4.6 because it's 4552 and you need to round it up for uh, conservative measures. So we will load 4.6 tons of fuel. The way I do it is I put 2 tons to each wing tank and then the remainder of 600 goes to the center tank. But that's 4.6 tons of fuel loaded. Uh, we'll have 83 passengers on board. By the way, we are using the 200 variant of the 146. It also has 300 and 100, but today's flight will be with the 200 variant. 83 passengers, and we are looking at uh, 1.7 tons of cargo. So we'll plug in probably 900 to the forward cargo and to oh it didn't take 900 we'll try again uh, 800 is good at the back and we'll put 900 here that's okay so now we have 1700 or 1.7 tons of uh, cargo loaded and everything else CG empty weight they are all within the limits we are good here so our flight plan routing and weights and balances are done. Aircraft is refueled and we'll keep the charts window open here. We'll go to the pedestal. Next thing is to plug in our transponder code. We will squat 1071. That's my regular transponder code and hit enter. We'll turn on the brake temperature uh, display and we'll turn on the yaw damper systems on. Uh, at this point. We can also get some uh, console lighting here. 
that's good. So now we need to carry out the rest of the checks. Uh, we'll turn on the flight directors. Our routing is done. We'll turn on our navigation radio here. And we'll turn, uh, we'll set the rest of the MCP uh, later on. So now we need the meta information to set our transponders. So current weather in Dublin is showing 15 degrees Celsius temperature, um, variable clouds at bit, um, variable clouds between uh, 170 and 280, and few at flight level 10, 010, and scattered clouds at uh, 025. So 10,000, 25,000 we have clouds and we have 1,700 to 2,800 we have variable clouds. Oh, that's winds variable, I'm sorry. I was reading the wrong part of the meta information. Current QNH is 1018. We will plug in the QNH. So that's set once and these others are synced. So we don't have to do it three times, but for the immersion, maybe there will be an option in the future to set the altimeters on all the uh, instruments to increase the immersion. So now we need to check our departure chart to make sure uh, we have enough navigational uh, backup or in terms of radio navigation in the event of a FMS failure uh, during departure. We are departing Liffey to Echo that's here and let's zoom in a little bit so we are departing runway 10 on course 0908 up to we can read the instructions here it should be on the side right here leave it to echo these are the minimum uh, climb gradients that you need to follow and the departure instructions should be at the top remain on Dublin Tower we are not using ATC so we are not worried about that climb to MSA MSA as you see here is 2400 so our initial climb will be about that um, runway 10 right expect closing obstacles do not climb above flight level 90 until instructed by ATC so that's our initial flight uh, level or initial clearance altitude of 9000 we will set that on the MCP and for a secondary uh, navigational aid we will use Collinstown VOR and tune that so that we can use it uh, in the event of NFMS failure. Let's go to the MCP. We will tune Collins VOR 111.2. That's one countermeasure done. We will set our altitude to 9000 for our initial climb. That's 9000 set. And we will also tune the Dublin VOR as a backup because they also it also goes to Liffey. So 114.9 on the NAV2 radio on the co-pilot side. So 114.9 and we'll turn this on. Course for NAV1 is, if you remember the chart, 0908. We'll set that course here. And the course for the NAV2 is 0904, as you see here. So we'll set that here as a backup in case we have issues on our departure. Uh, kind of finicky at times, but now it's set. So that's the navigation part done. We will turn on our TMS, Trust Modulation System, to set our N1, TGT and speed bugs. We will carry out a self-test to make sure the equipment is functioning as, it's, as expected. And after that, test we will select takeoff and that should give us what we need you can increase the TGT up to 840 that's the max TGT that you can use if you want a max power takeoff but we have enough runway so we will leave it as is for now 
clicking the placard will set the bugs for us. Uh, all of the bugs, as you see here, are now set for our takeoff. And that's the performance side of things done. We will turn off the TMS for now. We don't want this to interfere with the engine start. And we'll do a final scan of the overhead to make sure everything is ready for us to think about engine start. We can provide power to the galley. Assuming now the passengers started boarding, we can fasten the seat, turn on the fasten seatbelt signs. And at this point we can carry out a lights check to make sure all the lights at our overhead is functioning. We'll do the same check for the flight mode initiations, FMA. They are all working and last thing is to, to do is to turn on or activate our master warning system. One click will activate it, second click will put it into test mode to check all the lights and clicking one up or bottom in this case is going to uh, turn it on. So that's done. We'll switch over to the co-pilot side. We'll get rid of the yoke for the time being and we'll take a look at our flight recorder to make sure it has the right information. May 3rd, first leg of the day, yes sure, this is the first flight and our flight number is 212, we'll set it there. We'll go a little bit back, turn around and turn on the oxygen supply system and make sure it has enough oxygen for the cabin and the uh, cockpit, which looks like it does, yes. So we will turn it back off. While we are here, we'll carry out a oxygen mask task test. It is working. And we will cycle back to the pilot side and do the same thing here. All right, our oxygen is working. We can get some floodlights and panel lights on the co-pilot and pilot side as well to brighten up the cockpit a little bit more. That's good. And this is pretty much what you need to do to get the flight plan in place, load your aircraft, check your systems in terms of whether they work or not. And one thing we need to do is, let me get a little bit closer to show it. Right now this switch is showing NAV, which is the conventional radio navigation. To be able to use the FMS, we need to switch this to RNAV and RNAV will be displayed uh, here in the FMA. We need to do the same thing over on the co-pilot side and it should have the same annunciation showing our nav is armed and the aircraft is ready to fly an our nav flight plan. That is all about setting up the aircraft. We will have more works to do uh, at the overhead and we will carry those out um, here in a little bit. Okay, uh, it started raining but our aircraft is configured, our flight plan is in place and the last few passengers are uh, boarding to finish the boarding process. We'll go and take a look at the overhead. We will set our cruising altitude and pressurization system. We are going to cruise at 21,000 feet so we will set that up and for a better view you can check it. Inner dial shows the flight level and the outer one will show the cabin altitude. So that's now set. Um, we'll take a look at the temperature inside the cockpit. It's a little bit cold now. We can turn the system to warm and APU air and pack and increase the temperature a little bit to, uh, inc to keep our passengers nice and cozy at the back. So that is now done. Uh, we have a couple more things to do. We'll start with the upper overhead. While we are here, we'll check our hydraulic systems to make sure they are working. And we are also doing this to accumulate some pressure in the brake accumulator so that the brakes will hold the aircraft in place when we remove the chocks and start our engines. So the pressure is rising. The AC pump is a slower one, so it will take some time. But will, it will eventually come. We can also turn on the brake fans to auto so that they can work based on the temperature of our brakes. So the brake accumulator accumulated enough pressure that light extinguished and our DC pump is functioning as it should. 
We'll try the same thing with the AC pump. This is a much more faster pump, which will pressurize the system a lot quicker. And we'll also turn the PTU on to make sure our PTU is transferring that pressure and pressurizing the green system. All checks out, everything good. Now we can turn everything back to off. Cool. So this part of the overhead is pretty much done. It's a little bit dark. We can turn on the logo lights as well. Uh, we'll worry about beacon and strobe later on when we are ready to start the engines. We arm the flight deck emergency lights. Uh, over here, center tank transfer goes to auto. This will transfer the fuel in our center tanks to the wing tanks when we are airborne. So that's good. Uh, we'll turn on the pumps later when we are ready to push back. We are not quite there yet. Uh, electrical panel looks okay. Uh, nothing to worry here. And the APU, that's fine. Engines, we will come back to this. Uh, and engine anti-ice too. At this point, we can turn on our window heat and ice protection systems on. We can turn the ice detection system on as well. And that will be the last of our checks. I'm going to quickly take a look at the checklist I have on the other screen to make sure I'm not missing anything, but I think uh, we are good for the most part. Let's clear up that uh, master caution and, oh, sorry guys, alright, yep, everything checks, uh, we assume the passengers are bored with the airplane, we are ready to close our doors, but to be able to do that, we will need hydraulic power to retract, retract the stairs. So we'll go and turn on the AC pump, because that's the fastest one, which will pressurize the yellow system. And now we can retract the stairs. And while we are here, we can check our parking brakes are set. It's on the yellow system, which is good. Transponder is also set, and there is nothing to worry here. We'll close the door. Arm doors and okay, so that's the cabin announcement to arm the doors, and we'll we will remove the chocks and go back to our charts. We will pull up the uh, airport chart again. I wish you can uh, pin these uh, like you can in the Navigraph app, but it is not an option yet. And let's take a look at our taxi routing. We will push our tail to the right, take Whiskey 2, Sierra all the way down to Sierra 7 and into runway 10 right for our takeoff roll. That's our taxi routing. Uh, we will keep this window now and before our passengers get really uh, anxious we should start our pushback uh, momentarily. To do that we will turn our fuel pumps to on um, and We'll turn off the packs now. Let's take a look at the cabin temperature to see if it's improved at all. Yep, it's climbing, so the cabin is getting warmer, which is good. And we will call the pushback tug to push us back here in a little bit. All right, we are ready. I am using the ambitious pilot's toolbar pushback. I already pre-planned our pushback, so let's call the tug. Cockpit to ground. This is ground. Standby. And we will turn our beacon lights to on because we are getting ready to start the engines and that's here. It's assigned to a control a button on my controller. And we'll go down, do a final check. Everything is looking good. Uh, packs are coming off now. We will need the APU air to start our engines. And we are waiting for the type driver to tell us that he is ready and then we will uh, carry out the engine start procedure. Okay, sir, the bypass pin is installed, all doors and hatches closed and all ground equipment is removed. The parking brakes are set, you may lift. Parking brake set, lifting the aircraft. We are cleared for start and push. Okay, cleared for push start. Please release parking brake. Okay. Parking brake released. Parking brakes are released. You can close that window now. Back. You can start the engines in sequence. It will start in the sequence. 
we'll select we'll move the selector starter selector to engine number four we will turn on the start master switch we'll take a look around to make sure we are leaving the ramp and yes we are and we'll start with engine number four what we do here is we go down and we'll start monitoring engine number four and one rotation we are coming up to 20 percent so about 20 percent we will introduce fuel by unlatching the fuel lever and we'll keep monitoring so fuel fuel flow oil temperature ignition and n2 rotation so once we reach 40 percent n2 we should see oil pressure coming up as well and that is going to tell us that we had a good engine start so we passed 40 percent and fuel pressure is climbing too so that's a good engine start for engine number four we'll wait for the engine to stabilize it is stable now let's switch to engine number three and start engine number three again we are doing the same thing monitoring m1 rotation passing 20 percent we will introduce fuel fuel flow oil temperature ignition and to rotation Let's set the parking, parking brake. brake set. Parking brake set. Lowering aircraft. And two is about to press forty percent. Okay, sir. Clear to disconnect. And oil pressure is rising, so that's a good engine start for engine number flight. three. Holding position, waiting for the visual. Thank you and goodbye. Engine should stabilize here in a little bit, and we'll carry out with starting engine number two. Starter selector to two. Engine start, we'll monitor the same things one more time. M1 rotation. Passing 20%. Introduce fuel. We'll monitor fuel flow. Fuel flow. Oil prayer temperature. Ignition and N2 rotation, waiting for 40% N2 N2 about 40% and we see oil pressure rising so that's a good engine start for engine number 2 we'll go to the overhead and wait for engine number 2 to stabilize it's almost there and we can carry out the last and start the last engine. Selector to engine number one, hit the starter switch and monitor the same thing. M1 rotation. Passing 20%, introduce fuel. Monitoring fuel flow oil temperature, ignition, and N2 rotation, waiting for 40%. And one about 40%, oil pressure is rising, that's a good engine start. We are gonna wait for the engine to stabilize, and engine is stable now, that's a good engine start we'll turn the selector switch off, start master to off at this point we can turn on AP engine air or engine bleeds and we can turn both packs on that should provide air to the cabin and cockpit uh, we can turn on the hydraulic pumps for the engine number 2 and 3 on and we'll turn on the PTU that should provide hydraulic pressure to the systems and we are monitoring the gauges and waiting for the lights to extinguish 
lower overhead we will turn on the engine generators double click or twice click twice and we'll check the engine generators to make sure they are generating enough power which they are we also check the transformer rectifiers to make sure enough they are working and converting uh, AC to DC all systems are operational and everything is looking good we don't need APU air we will keep it off but we will keep the APU running and APU gen on the bus until uh, we are in climb as a secondary measure in case we lose an engine we can quickly turn the APU or air on and uh, start try to start that engine again we will turn on the taxi lights and we will now start our taxi before getting there I want to go and explain the autopilot panel a little bit so that I have enough time to do it rather than trying to do it while trying to control the aircraft during takeoff and climb so it's a simple autopilot system I will go over the switches this is not the autopilot master this is a light that shows the autopilot is uh, engaged glide slope indicator or glide slope mode to capture a glide slope and descend into an ILS approach localizer same thing for and you have to arm both for an ILS approach uh, altitude mode which holds the current altitude vertical speed uh, mach hold VNAV is I believe not functional in this aircraft because TMS does not have authority enough to commence a VNAV climb so we will stick to the other modes I haven't tested this out but I think it's not possible for VNAV to work in this aircraft LNAV does work, indicated airspeed mode and heading mode so these are the autopilot modes and there is another one that I'd like to talk before we depart if you go to your control options and I bound this to a button on my joystick so you might want to do this as well uh, it is tied to let's search by input afterburner uh, toggle afterburner so you might want to bind the button to this so what this does is according to the manual that's this that's the uh, binding that you need to use and this activates the sync mode which means it momentarily pauses the autopilot gives you control so that you can pitch up or down and sync it and press the button again for the autopilot to capture that information and follow what you want it to do uh, that's a little bit scary that guy doesn't know where he is coming uh, he's gonna run into us I guess that's part of the Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, traffic issues or AI traffic issues hopefully he doesn't but he looks like he is turning now so we are good anyway so that's basic information about the autopilot before we do our uh, taxi we'll power on the TMS and select takeoff that is now ready and last thing to do is to set our flaps to flaps 18 for takeoff and transponder to TARA all right we are now ready to taxi parking brake is off and the aircraft should start rolling with idle power uh, unless it's wet on the ground and it doesn't want to move so let's give it some power to keep rolling and it should now uh, continue rolling down the taxiway we will make a right turn and follow the taxi routing that I have shared into runway 10 Whiskey 2, Sierra and Sierra 7 alright while we are taxiing we can do a config check to make sure our takeoff uh, configuration is correct which it is we didn't see a horn so that's good so we are pretty much ready and configured for our takeoff everything is set uh, what we can do is we can arm the altitude you have to arm the altitude for the autopilot to capture that altitude and we can arm the vertical speed mode and LNAV mode for now that will give us enough information to follow we'll take this right turn slow down a little bit and slowly turn 
into Runway Sierra. Oh, no, not Runway, Taxiway Sierra, sorry. And we'll carry Sierra all the way to the end and then Sierra 7 into Runway 10 right. So we are on Sierra now. You can also see it here on the runway markings right there and we'll carry on Sierra oh we are on Whiskey 2 I'm sorry we are on Whiskey 2 entering Sierra right now and we'll carry on Sierra uh, for the rest of the taxi routing there's an aircraft just landed KLM 941 and I am using Aerosoft Simple Traffic. I was using AIG, but take, that takes up too much space in my community folder, like about 10 gigabytes. And I wanted a solution that's a little bit less uh, in storage usage and works okay. So that's what I'm using for AI traffic to uh, accurately represent the models, aircraft models our model matching all right final check on the overhead are we missing anything I don't think so all is looking good everything checks out so we are we are pretty much ready if you catch something that I missed let me know I am still learning this aircraft so drop me a comment about something that I missed but I tried to cover everything to you give you enough information to get her up in the air and enjoy the flight Takeoff roll is all going to be a little bit sensitive. She uh, tends to be sensitive on rudder inputs during takeoff roll. So I'll try to maintain center line as much as I can. And we might have some crosswind that might push us off the runway center. But I'll try to compensate for that as much as I can and see how that goes. All right. We are on Sierra still. Coming up to our turn point of Sierra 7 if you check here that's the second left after Sierra 5 and we will do a full runway we will use full runway for takeoff we could have done an intersection takeoff uh, it's possible uh, this aircraft can take off from shorter runways but I wanted to go all the way down and uh, do a full use the full runway length for our takeoff run All right, everything looks okay here. Our passengers seem to be happy. Look at the detail of the flaps and the wing. Oh my gosh, this aircraft is exceptionally well done in terms of modeling. So that's the first left. Actually, that's not the first left. That's Sierra. Se oh no, the Sierra 7 is the next one. I'm sorry. That's the first left. That's next one is Sierra 7. Yep. Right here, Sierra 7 is marked on the ground. For a second I thought we passed that point when we were looking into the cabin and pretending like we are a passenger in the aircraft. Beautiful views from the wings and from the cabin. And, um, as I said, fantastic add-on by Just Flight. One thing I forgot is to turn on the chrono let's start the chrono or block time and it should be still fine we haven't taken off yet so uh, we are close we are coming up to our hold short point we will momentarily stop and configure our aircraft for takeoff and we will line up and take off immediately assuming that we have clearance from ATC that's one of the things that I'm missing in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I wish the default ATC was a little bit better. I hope uh, Asobo and Microsoft has plans to improve the ATC in the coming months so that we can all enjoy a full simulation experience without uh, the need for uh, additional software. All right, let's hold short here. We assume we have takeoff clearance, we'll turn the strobe lights to on, that's this switch right here. Go to the lower overhead and we'll turn on our landing lights and runway exit lights. Okay, so that's all needs to be done and we will line up and do our takeoff roll. Let's check our 
standby pump pass, which I should have checked. That's roughly showing. Uh, it's showing south now, so to uh, 180 degrees, and our instrument is also showing 18 right here. So our compass and our HSI is accurate. This here is a TCAS and a vertical speed indicator. Oh, look at that, we have birds. All right, we are lining up. We will do a couple more things and then do our takeoff roll. All right, it's just a little bit off to the right, but we are good now. Let's stop here, apply the brakes gently, and we'll go down. Which one was it? This. Okay, we'll go a little bit further, turn the weather radar, and turn it to WX. This is still not working. Uh, hopefully sim update 10 or 11 will include API for weather system and the developers are waiting for that to implement weather radar to their payware aircraft. Our transponder is good, we have TARA, we don't need the brake temperature gauge anymore. Uh, all the instruments, everything checks and we can pull the departure chart here to have that ready. Liffy to echo. That's this. Come on. It is glitchy at times, but now we have the departure chart here. We'll zoom in a little bit and we are ready to do our takeoff roll. Alright, we'll hold the brakes, increase the throttle to 55% M1. TMS set to take off. Okay, TMS set to take off. We'll release the brakes and increase the throttle until the box that we set up using the TMS. Power set, flex achieved. Power set, checked. Forward pressure on the yoke. Maintain the center Speed line. Both sides. 80 knots. 80 knots checked. V1. V1. Rotate. Rotate. And D2. off she goes. We'll follow the flight director. Positive rate applied. Gear. Positive rate. Gear is coming up. We are passing 400 feet. Pitching down to gain some speed to retract the flaps. Right. Coming up to VTO. VFTO. VFTO. Flaps are coming in. And at this point, we can go ahead and engage the autopilot. That's this switch here. Autopilot is now active. And it should follow. It is going to pitch down. And this is where that sink button comes in handy. We'll reduce the throttles to 88%. We'll go to the TMS, select sync and engine number one. We have traffic, that's what that warning is. So now we will... Okay, we are climbing. All right, so that was traffic working. So what we will do at this point is, because autopilot is controlling, we will press that sync button after burner toggle. That will pause the autopilot and then we can pitch up to there and then reactivate that and then the aircraft will maintain that pitch and keep climbing. What's left for us is to monitor the speed. We are a little bit over 250, so we will come back a little bit to reduce the speed and our best climb speed is 220 knots and we will monitor the TMS or um, engine, engine gauges and what we are trying to achieve here is uh, we will set the engines for 88% and then we will increase it by 1% for every 5000 feet so that's the takeoff 
and we can quickly jump outside to see uh, what we are doing. Okay, everything checks out. Passing 5000. So the transition altitude I believe for Dublin is 6000 if I'm not mistaken. So passing to 6000 we will uh, control and set the tra set the altimeter to standard that's 6000 let's set standard pressure standard is set now the rest is to monitor the uh, takeoff one thing I forgot is you have to turn the continuous ignition to on and anti systems to on because we are passing through clouds that is now done we don't need this and the aircraft will warn us if it detects any ice over here in the master warning system Alright, passing 7000, speed is looking good, we need to pitch down a little bit, so let's press the sync button again and pitch the nose down to about 2000 feet per minute and we sync and the aircraft should maintain that pitch attitude. Alright, we are coming up to 9000, we will assume that we are clear to our fl flight level of 21000, we will set that on the MCP. arm and then it will sink and the aircraft should keep climbing past 9000 very good very good guys so that is the departure with the 146 A beautiful aircraft as I mentioned before uh, again one more time Thank you Just Flight for bringing a fantastic airliner for us to enjoy uh, into Microsoft Flight Simulator. What a beauty. This aircraft is so pretty to look at. Okay, past 10,000 we can turn off the runway exit lights and our landing lights and we can also release the cabin. And we'll inform the cabin. I should have called the cabin for takeoff, but I forgot that too. Now we are climbing, we can go ahead and do some after takeoff checks. APU jam comes offline, uh, APU air is already off, we can stop the APU. That is done. We can go to the upper overhead and let me take a look at the checklist. Engine air is on, PEX is on, gear is up gear is up, lights are out, flaps are zero, TMS is set, PTU off, uh, altimeters are set, pressurization, we'll check the pressure, pressurization to make sure it's building. Uh, we have some ice detected warning, we will take care of that here in a little bit. So our cabin altitude is climbing, there is delta P, our pressurization system is working. Oh. Autopilot is connected because of us going into the stall. Okay, we'll, we'll fix that momentarily. Um, I was too busy with other systems. That's why I think in real world, two people are flying an aircraft, not just one. So we will pitch for 1500 feet per minute. We will increase the throttle. And leave it there. So this should get us back on the climb speed. It's climbing too high. Let's pitch down a little bit and resync. And arm the VS mode and arm LNAV again. And this should get us back to where we need to be. Okay, so that's good. We are back on track. And sorry about that little hiccup, guys. It gets very busy at takeoff and sometimes you tend to forget things but we are all good now that's where the warning systems come in handy to let you know about these uh, issues so that you as the pilot flying can make corrections uh, we didn't kill anyone we didn't damage the aircraft which is a good sign i'm aiming for 1500 p feet per minute to build up some speed and the aircraft should maintain that and the speed should come back up to where it needs to be. At this point we can go and set our speed bug to our 
ideal climb speed of 220 knots and we can use that to gauge our speed we might use a little bit more power we are at 15,000 feet so we should be at 92 percent uh, M1 and that should get us back to the speed we need to be at slowly but surely we will be there anyway I think this is the departure part uh, we are good we are on our way we will climb like this level off and set the aircraft for cruise speed which is manual due to not having auto thrust what TMS can help you is when you sync it to engine number one is the master now so what throttle setting engine one has the TMS will try to match all the other engines to engine number one and the vibration display here is showing how much vibration we have in each engine okay so I will keep climbing and I will bring you guys back at cruise when we are ready to descend or close enough so that we can decide, uh, discuss how we can calculate the top of descent see you guys in a little bit welcome back friends we reached our cruise level and currently cruising at 21,000 feet what a beautiful view let's jump into the cockpit and let's talk about our descent because things are going to happen very quickly due to this flight being a short one I already pulled the arrival chart uh, we'll zoom in and we'll take a look at that so let's do the instructions is here uh, Mercy 3 Bravo flight level 170 by Malut this way point so we need to descend 4000 feet down to Valud, Malud and we can turn this VOR just a secondary measure and enter the course uh, we need to descend down to 7000 and then we will have a 230 speed restriction by Mercy we will respect this and we will pull the uh, approach plate and take a look at that to see how our approach is going to look like so let's first tune the wall VOR which is 114 decimal 1 so we will tune that to our primary nav radio or nav 1 and transfer over we should get the DME reading we are 56 miles away so the three times rule is we need to descend 4000 feet that means times that by three we need to start our descent 12 miles before that waypoint and let's add a five mile buffer to it so when the DME reads around 17 20 miles we should start our descent down to 17,000 so that's step number one one thing that changed is I re-ran the Simbrief trail plan and looks like the weather has changed so therefore our arrival changed so instead of we are doing ILS 05 right we are now going to do an ILS 23 right which is pretty common uh, in flight especially when ATC is controlling your arrival and approach so we will still use the same uh, star we will use ILS to two, runway 23 right and we will use an MCT transition let's take a look at that uh, approach plate so we'll pull runway 23 right hopefully it will load sometimes this gets stuck there we go so that's our approach plate MCT is the Manchester VOR we can keep it on standby 113.55 and we will transition using MCT which means we will pass over that VOR and then travel out oh that's the over speed warning let's cut the throttles a little bit I need to monitor my speed in this aircraft you have to be very careful about your speed so we will come over the VOR travel outbound on 052 up to uh, up to 12 miles and then do a loop turn around and we have a max 185 knots speed restriction there uh, at 13 
or 12.3 DME to MCT, we will execute a turn on course 007 and then eventually 187 and then come back, line up and land. So which takes us to how we are going to calculate uh, when we are going to start descending. We will base it off of 17,000 altitude that we'll be at, which means if we look at here, we need to descend down to 3,500 to that's that's roughly uh, 13,500 difference not roughly exactly 13,500 difference so again three times rule we need to be at that altitude when passing over this VOR so that's 13.5 times 3 is uh, 42 43.5 let's go and take a look at our FMC index page progress page and that will tell us our distance to Malud 16 so we should start descending to 17,000 let's do that first arm VS mode and we will go sink pitch down about 1500 feet per minute and sink that cut the throttles back so that we don't overspeed the aircraft so now we are coming down to 17,000 uh, before we reach Malud so we need to tune Manchester VOR now 113.55 did we pass over the wild VOR? not yet we are coming there so um, we will switch over the frequency to read the DME to Manchester and that will be our decision maker on uh, when we should descend. To have an idea, we are 100 miles away from the airport, uh, from our destination. So that means uh, we need to monitor that DME and we need to start our descent at uh, 43.5 let's put a 10 mile buffer and round it up to 50 miles 50 miles away from our destination we should be descending down and in this aircraft if you are feeling like you are not going to meet it do not hesitate to use the speed brakes this aircraft is designed to do steep approaches into airports where your glide slope is greater than 3 degrees so should it be a problem um, we are coming down to 17,000. We haven't reached that Malut yet, but let's go back to our uh, arrival chart and keep that here for now so that we know where we are and what are we going to do. Coming down to Malud, didn't quite make the speed restriction. Uh, I'm sorry, didn't quite make the uh, altitude restriction we will slow down give the aircraft more time to catch up and descend down to 17,000 we are still one mile away so we should be within the limits no issues there and I'm cutting the throttles because we have a 230 speed restriction that's almost uh, very close right here in about 17 miles here, 17 so 30 miles, in about 30 miles we should slow down uh, to 230 uh, miles per hour indicated airspeed. So for now we are close to 17,000, uh, that's okay. We will increase the throttles back so that we can maintain some of our speed until we are ready to slow down. I will keep the throttles about 70% M1 and see where it takes us. And we are almost level and about to pass over the wall VOR. So, 50 miles away from uh, MCT VOR, we need to be descending. So, we can switch the frequency right now because we are almost there. And this is the benefit of having a tablet in the cockpit and seeing your position in the world. Uh, I love it. I don't have to leave the cockpit to check anything else. 
anything that we need to check here not really um, we don't need the brake temperature gauge no more so that's fine and we are maintaining 17,000 and coming up to our waypoint with the speed restriction we'll keep the speed around 250 ish and we should have no problem slowing down to 230 knots let's go and set our speed bug for visual reference so that we don't have to get closer so that's roughly 230 knots and now we can f switch over the frequency and see if we can read the DME for uh, MCT we are 36 miles away that's a little bit too close we said 50 and we are also below that so I think we should start descending down to 2500 immediately to be on the safe side so we will set the altitude and short hops has a tendency of doing this will engage vertical speed again and then we will get to the sync mode and we will pitch the aircraft down to about 1500 1700 feet per minute this time just to be on the safe side and catch up to our profile we will get down to there and resync so we should be turning now because I uh, pressed the sync the autopilot paused for a minute so we should get back on profile and we need to slow down uh, to 230 knots cutting the throttles applying some speed brakes to slow us down and one thing we need to do while we are descending is put the TMS to descent mode that is now done I see ice detected so let's go and turn on our ice protection systems we should be good now engine anti-ice is already on because I was passing through the clouds so we are good on that front ice warning is disappeared now I'm not sure if it's gonna come back when we turn off the anti-ice systems we don't need to keep them on for too long if there is no ice yep ice is coming back so let's keep them on and let's see where it takes us alright so now we are descending and coming down to 10,000 we are going to set the local pressure passing 10,000 we are not going to wait for the transition altitude so let me check the weather in Manchester real quick temperature is 9, 10 degrees dew point 9 degrees and altimeter is 1018 winds are coming from 190 degrees at 3 knots so pretty much calm and we have some cloud coverage around 4400 that's all good uh, we shouldn't have any problems and while we are getting uh, out of the arrival chart let's go and pull our approach plate again for more situational awareness and we should see air, our aircraft popping on the display here in a little bit we'll get closer we have to set a couple things here localizer frequency is 109 or decimal 5 we have to set that here 109 or decimal 5 is set once 109 or decimal 5 is set twice and the last thing we need to set is our final approach course of 233 degrees so 232 let's go and set that up here first 232 we set once and 232 set twice so that's our approach set ILS frequency is on standby and we are all good coming down to 10,000 and we have to keep slowing down I forgot about that speed restriction and we overshot that a little bit so let's slow down the aircraft and cut the throttles back there we go and I'm applying speed brakes if we go outside you'll see that clamshell speed brake open almost all the way uh, to slow us down 
All right, coming up to 10,000, landing lights will come on and we'll turn on the passenger signs, seatbelt signs. Uh, Anti-ice warning is not there, but we will keep the anti-ice systems on because we are passing through clouds. And while doing that, we can turn on the continuous ignition as a secondary measure. And we keep slowing down to 230. That's looking good. Throttles are almost idle. And while we are waiting for the descent, let's take a look at our minimums. 640 is what we need to set. We'll go down and set it here, 640. That takes some time to roll that switch all the way up to 640. That's set once, and we need to do the same thing on the co-pilot side as well. So let's roll this up to 630, 640 as well. 640 is set twice. And we need to set the altimeter to 1018, that's the local pressure at Manchester. That's set here, set here, and also set there. That's good. And we are descending down very nicely. We can shallow the descent a little bit if we want to. Let's go sink and bring it up to 1000 feet per minute. Let's re-sync and it should help us with the speed as well. we'll keep the throttles at around 50% M1 and maintain and monitor our speed. If you slow down too much your autopilot will disconnect and you don't want that happening. We know we have a 185 when we are executing that turn. We are almost 10 miles away from the MCT VOR. There is our, our aircraft and we are gonna make that turn. Actually we can descend a little bit rapidly, a little bit faster because uh, we are almost there. So let's keep our descent rate high and let's get down as fast as possible. All right, let's slow the aircraft down more. We don't want to speed too much. And eight miles to MCT. Altitude is looking good. We should be fine on that descent profile. Let's go up. We have to turn the PTU back to on. Uh, center transfer, center tank transfer is turned off because we don't have any fuel left in the center tanks. Uh, the rest, we will turn on the APU a little bit later uh, for the approach because we want to have APU power and APU bleed and we will use the turn off the engine bleeds to reduce the stress on the engines on approach. So at about our altitude that we need to be at which is 3500 2000 almost 2000 to go and everything is looking nice so far all right let's be a passenger for a while and enjoy the view of Manchester down below this is looking great all right passing 5000 we need to start slowing down further and I'm gonna set the speed back to 185 roughly so that's 190 and that's 185 let's go to our placard and we will be doing a flaps 33 rending and our reference speed is 119er we will set the little bug that speed later on a thousand feet to go that worked pretty good and we are still on a Manchester VOR. So one function in this aircraft that I can share is because we need to keep that DME here because we are reading um, 12 DME, 12.3 and that should be displayed on our uh, M FMS2 but it's not. Uh, what we can do is we can switch to DME hold which will keep the DME information for MCT and we can switch to the ILS frequency to see if we are going to receive the signal. Double checking the frequency one more time, 109 or decimal 5. We should pick up that uh, localizer signal very shortly. Alright, so let's keep our speed uh, coming down to 3500. The aircraft should automatically slow down 
which is what we want speed brakes are in already and we are at 3500 so throttles are almost at idle to slow us down to 185 knots and it started raining how nice so this is going to be an epic approach into Manchester All right, aircraft leveling off that should bleed some speed and get us to where we need to be at and I'll get a closer look to our airspeed indicator yep it is slowing down maybe not as much but we can always use the speed brakes to slow us down there we go now we started that speed bleeding off towards one niner zero indicated airspeed and I'm gonna keep monitoring the speed and uh, keep the speed around where it needs to be at to make sure we are turning uh, making that turn uh, as intended so we can because we have the speed now we can go flaps 1 or flaps 18 at this point that should also slow us down we don't need the speed brakes no more and we will monitor the speed and do not let it drop below uh, stall speed and flaps should also help with easing that turn it's okay to slow down a little bit further but we might want to keep the throttles up for a little bit let's set our reference speed of 119 uh, that is going to be our landing speed and yep 119 that's landing speed we'll put 5 miles on it so the one 24 will be our approach speed roughly that's how I do the calculation I'm not sure if it's accurate to real world interestingly enough I am not still picking up the ILS signal that is a little bit concerning so I'm not sure what's happening with the localizer let's get out of the ME hold we are well, okay 22 what are you saying all right, I'll go one notch of collapse two, drop the landing gear. It's a little bit early to drop the landing gear, but it's fine. Uh, we are still not picking up the localizer signal, so that's a little bit worrying. We might end up doing a visual approach into the runway, but we will see what happens. Uh, let's... Oh, the aircraft is turning almost in place now and the speed is dropping too much so let's add some throttle to speed up because we don't want to stall and disconnect the autopilot we can go flips 33 now we can turn on the not that one runway exit lights landing lights are already on and we'll fire up the APU now and turn the oh, that was uh, that's what I was afraid of so that's that's we entered into a stall guys that's what happened we dropped the speed too much so we will speed up and we will get the autopilot back and we can switch to nav now and try the localizer okay so let's see where this gets us okay it says glide slope captured I'm not reading it on the oh because it's not tuned maybe and we'll put the APU generator on the bus APU is online, we can turn the engine bleeds off we'll reduce the stress on the engines and we'll keep the speed up until we get the descent final glide step, captured. glide slope is captured now and all left for us to do is monitor the speed and adjust accordingly so that was a little hiccup uh, the weather looks nasty. I hope we'll get a visual of the runway before it's before we reach our minimums. Uh, we still haven't started reading the radio altimeter, so we will eventually cut the throttles back. We are speeding up too much. We don't want to overspeed and risk the approach. We'll keep the speed around 60 percent. 
that should get us where we need to be at and we can always use the speed brakes if we want to so we are on glide slope and we are not quite on speed yet we'll slow down a little bit more and get the speed down we don't want to risk losing the glide slope okay speed is coming down I think we should be fine now All right, we will maintain the throttles like this around 50% 50 percent 50 55 percent and all is looking good at this point still on profile make the cabin call for landing all right everything is set and we are established on the ILS and we are looking for the speed again it's bleeding off so let's increase cabin is secured we are good on the speed and at this point we are just monitoring the speed until we see the visual of the runway all right still not seeing anything we might want to wait until the minimums and make a decision on whether are we are going to do a missed approach or land the aircraft so monitoring the speed slowing down a little bit more finally getting below the clouds speed is looking good a little bit faster but it's all right we can always control that there are throttles and still no sign of the runway in in front of us uh, it's raining that's uh, that's gonna create a little bit more challenge but it's all right we will wait until the minimums we still have and we are above the glide slope now so let's cut the throttles down I'm looking at the glide slope indicator so that tells us that we are above the glide slope we will slow down and make the aircraft catch up to that glide slope and hopefully we will see the runway I'm not seeing it still so that's a little bit concerning if you ask me but I see some fade lights or something over there that might be the runway or we might do a missed approach yeah we are almost there but I'm not seeing the lights 1000 checked almost at our minimums glide slope is coming back so we are back on profile slowing down so we should increase the throttles a little bit and do not drop below the reference speed oh that's the airport right there all right so now we have a visual minimums, minimums. continue disconnecting the autopilot and my plane now we will stay on glide slope closely monitoring our airspeed and uh, horizontal artificial horizon 500 checked we are slipping off to the side a little bit so let's correct for that and get some radar input and that is looking great so we are missing the glide slope let's go down and pitch the nose down to get back on profile at this point it is not a good idea to pitch higher or pitch more all right passing the threshold slowly closing the throttles 40, 30, and flaring 20. slowly so that's going to be a low the landing a little bit okay we are down uh, spoilers are extended and we are going to push the nose down nose is on the ground let's get back on the center line it's a little bit windy and we are going to apply manual braking and we will probably use this next high speed exit to vacate the runway okay speed brakes are coming in throttles are idle flaps are coming in switch to taxi lights runway exit lights can come off and we will clean up the aircraft 
slowly. Transponder can go back to standby. We will need our um, brake temperature display there. Okay, we stopped here. That's okay. We stopped a little bit early though. We should vacate the runway completely. This is why aircraft are flown with two pilots, not just one. Alright, we'll slowly taxi and then do the rest of the stuff while we are taxiing. Uh, we need to take a look at the taxi chart of Manchester and find ourselves a parking spot. Probably use this taxiway, and for some reason that chart didn't work. Okay, there we go. I hope sometimes that Navigraph integration stalls and loses the connection. I hope this is not one of those occasions. Let's see here. Let's pull another chart and let's go back to the airport chart. There we go. All right, that's better. Let's get on the taxiway. Oh gosh, a lot of stuff to take care of uh, by yourself. We don't need the TMS anymore. We can turn that off. Uh, APU is running. We don't need the engine bleeds. We'll keep the APU running. Uh, flight directors can come off now. That's okay. We already took care of the transponder. Weather radar can go to standby or even to off even though it's not working just for good measure and we will zoom in and what I'd like to do here is request taxi clearance from ground using the default ATC Manchester ground British aerospace Echo India Romeo Juliet Delta request taxi to the gate forgot to change our British aerospace Echo India Romeo Juliet Delta taxi to get one two Lima using taxiway Alpha Charlie Lima so Alpha, which is this, we will take this turn and I like this taxi ribbon because I'm still trying to figure out where to go but it says Alpha, Charlie and then Lima and that's where probably our gate is British but we will... Romeo, Juliet, Delta. Please acknowledge. let's acknowledge that I keep forgetting this Taxiing to gate 1 to Lima using taxiway Alpha, Charlie, Lima, British Aerospace, Romeo, Juliet, Delta this is the only thing I like in the pilot assistance systems. The taxi ribbon makes it so much easier to taxi and it creates some immersion to see a marshaller to help you park to the gate. So which is always a nice thing. Let's turn on the ice systems off. Um, these two, we don't need them anymore. Let's get towards our taxi routing and our gate and we'll take a look at other stuff uh, as we... Oh, that right click bug is still there that's why I wasn't able to turn into the taxiway quite annoying at times I hope they fix it I was hoping that this will be fixed with some update uh, 9 it didn't happen hopefully in the next one we should be fairly okay PTU Engine pumps, our oh, strobes are still on so we can turn off the strobes, we don't need them anymore, I forgot to do that. But that is our gate in front of us, and welcome to Manchester guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, I think I flew this road route uh, probably 6-7 oh, times to test my theories and calculations. So getting a video to you guys takes about for five hours of my time even if it's a 45 minute video um, therefore I really appreciate your support and if you stumbled upon this video I would very much appreciate it if you take a couple seconds to hit that subscribe button turn the notifications to get notified and that will tell me that uh, I am on the right track and I'm doing something uh, that people likes also I like to thank to all of the subscribers that I have on my channel 
uh, if it wasn't for you guys probably I wouldn't be here today so thank you very much for your continued support and I enjoy being a part of this uh, little community we have uh, in the Sin Pilot channel. So we smashed that guy to the ground. Let's slow down. Okay. We are gonna hit the target, man. Let us stop. That's it. Parking brakes set, and let's clean up the aircraft. All right, everything over here looks okay. Packs are on, APU air is on, engine bleeds are off. Uh, we can turn off the pedo heats and uh, windscreen heats. Continuous ignition can now come off. Seat belt can come off. Uh, runway exit lights are already off. Um, nothing to worry up here and I think we are good to shut down our engines to be honest so let's do that and bring all four engines to fuel cutoff all right we can now disarm our master warning system and we can open our doors while placing the chucks in place open the forward door and while we have hydraulic power, we will extend the stairs. Alright, that's done. Now, engine generators can come off. They are now offline. APU gem will stay on the bus. And we can turn off the engine pumps. We'll keep the DC pump, AC pump on auto. We don't need the PTU at this point. It's good. Actually, we don't need any hydraulic power at all. Everything is retracted, so let's turn those pumps off. Uh, we'll check the brake temperature. It's still cooling down, so we need to keep the brake fan running on auto. Uh, if we, this is a turnaround and if we are taking off again, we can turn off the beacon light. Uh, we can turn off the no smoking lights and disarm the cabin and light deck emergency lights as well. Galley power will stay. We are good on the AC buses. And that is pretty much it for now until we shut down the rest of the aircraft. We can turn off our radios though. Radios are off now. And, and yeah, we'll keep the transponder on standby. That can come off as well. We'll go to the overhead and turn all the master systems off. Lift spoilers, anti-skid. Why you keep coming? Alright, that's off. That's off. We'll keep that on there. Engine pumps are off. Coming down. Fuel tanks can come fuel pumps can come off except left inner which is feeding the APU right now we'll check the APU gen here we'll check our batteries and we can now dim the lights we don't need them anymore and we are getting ready to shut down our aircraft all, right, all the lights are coming off brakes are also now cooled down all right and uh, we will assume that all the passengers did left the aircraft and we are going to start another flight later on we can turn off our radio equipment that one too TMS is already off all over here looks good so we are pretty much done so brakes are cooled enough and they will cool off by the time we are ready to board passengers again so we will turn that off and finally we will stop our APU turn off the APU gen, untie the buses that's all good oh, not override yep um, APU air can come off, cabin air packs, they are off now. 
and we will turn off our batteries there you go guys welcome to Manchester I hope you enjoyed this tutorial flight in the fantastic just flight BAE 146 professional next video will be the same flight route but this time we will be doing radio navigation using our conventional radio equipment on board and we'll see how that goes as a rel relative to the GPS flight plan. Thanks for being here with me today. I appreciate your support, uh, support as always, and I'll be seeing you in the next video.